BCS Conference Breakdown. Before we look at 2013, we look back at 2012, Mark Rogers TV, comparing the BCS conferences. So we're looking at the bowl results first. We're also looking at the non-conference records between the BCS leagues and also taking into consideration those games against Notre Dame and top 25 competition. Yes, the wins and losses are all that in the end count. But trying to be a little bit smarter about it, we know that your hardcore college football fans want to delve a little bit deeper. We know that there are dominating efforts and performances. There's also some really bad losses out there. So conferences are going to get tagged for the bad losses, and we're going to understand some situations where some teams lost but played extremely well against better competition. Meaning, for example, in the Big Ten, Wisconsin goes to the Rose Bowl. They lose to Stanford 20-14. to Okay, it's a win for Stanford and the Pac-12, a loss for the Big Ten and Wisconsin. We understand that. That's all that counts. But in analyzing the conference competition against one another, understand that Stanford is the Pac-12 champion from 2012. Wisconsin, yes, they won the Big Ten championship game, but we know the circumstances with Ohio State and Penn State. Wisconsin finished 4-4 four and four in the Big Ten. They would have been the sixth seed if you stacked up the Big Ten, 1 through 12. Wisconsin, the sixth seed. So the Badgers going out to Pasadena, playing Wisconsin within 20 to 14, taking that game down to the final drive, gives them some brownie points in this competition. On the other hand, Purdue in the Big Ten takes on Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, just a 7 and 5 unranked team. Purdue, 6 and 6. Should be an even matchup. Purdue gets blasted 58 14. Bad, bad loss for the Big Ten. Okay, we've looked at the SEC. We've looked at the Big Ten. So we're going to go through the bowl results right now for the ACC and also look at the non-conference competition during the regular season. And during these bowl games, we are tagging a dominance factor on each game. And we'll explain that in just a minute. Starting with Florida State, the ACC champion goes to the Orange Bowl. Didn't do themselves a whole lot of favors in playing Northern Illinois, but of course they couldn't help it. Florida State did what they had to do. They won that game 31-10. Northern Illinois came in at 12-1, ranked 15th in the country. We don't believe that Northern Illinois was 15th in the country. They're one of the top 25 or 35 teams in the country that Florida State defeated by 21. They did have one loss, of course, at 12-1. That was to Iowa, a 4-8 and eight team in the Big Ten. Florida State uh, lost to Florida. That was their big non-conference loss. They also lost to North Carolina State. So that's how that one shook out. So Florida State won that game easily. It was somewhat competitive in the first half. Florida State dominated on defense. They won again 31 to 10. We'll give them a dominance factor on a scale of 1 to 10 of 7. Would be much higher if they had defeated a better opponent. But a 7 for Florida State over Northern Illinois. Okay, great game for the ACC. Big win here. Clemson defeats LSU 25-24 in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. LSU a bit down from recent years, but still clearly one of the top 10 or 12 teams in the country. Came in at 10-2. There were only two losses against Florida, one of the best teams in the country. And of course, mighty Alabama on the final drive of the game. So LSU legit. They beat uh, Mississippi State, Ole Miss, South Carolina, and Washington. And, of course, LSU out of the SEC, one of the top, again, 10 teams in the country. So Clemson gets a lot here, winning 25-24. Keep in mind that LSU had a 10-point lead late in the game, and Les Miles made some very questionable calls. Check out our video post on that on the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Uh, Clemson wins at 25-24. Give them a dominance factor. Of course, it was razor thin, winning by one point. Clemson also lost in the regular season in their annual showdown with South Carolina. So Clemson needed to win this game uh, in non-conference uh, play over LSU 25-24. Okay, Georgia Tech defeats USC 21-7. How good was USC? Well, number one preseason by the end of the season, 7-6. and six. No Matt Barkley in that game. Georgia Tech still an underdog, a heavy underdog in that game. USC lost all its big games. They didn't defeat really anybody that good. They lost to Stanford, Notre Dame, Oregon, UCLA. No shame in that. All those very good football teams, especially, of course, Stanford, Notre Dame, and Oregon. But they did lose to Arizona as well. Not a great football team. Uh, Georgia Tech, again, wins at 21-7. We give them a dominance factor of 6. 
in defeating the Trojans minus Matt Barkley. Georgia Tech had an interesting season, so they finished 7-7 seven and seven after uh, winning the bowl game and losing the ACC championship game with North Carolina and Miami ineligible. Georgia Tech, out of conference, did not show up. They lost to Georgia by 32. Okay, understandable. One of the best teams in the country there, but Middle Tennessee beat them by 21. BYU defeated Georgia Tech 41-17. to Georgia Tech wins it over USC in the bowl game, 21-7. Dominance factor of 6 for the Yellow Jackets. Okay, next up, North Carolina State. They lose to Vanderbilt, 38-24, in one of the many ACC-SEC matchups. Vandy came in at 8-4, give them a dominance factor in this game of 6, meaning for the ACC in North Carolina State, that's a minus 6, as Vandy really, if you watch that game, they dominated from the beginning, were rarely threatened. It was usually a two-score game. Vandy, of course, out of the SEC, played very well in going 9-4 and four overall. They did lose out of conference to Northwestern. North Carolina State's one big game out of conference in the regular season was against Tennessee. They lost by two touchdowns. And when you're comparing, as I noted to a viewer a few days ago who commented uh, on another video post, uh, the difference right here with the ACC and the SEC. North Carolina State probably about the fourth best team in the ACC against Tennessee. Missed a bowl in the SEC, went 5-7, and seven, probably the 10th or 11th best team in the SEC, and Tennessee wins that game by two touchdowns. So Vandy defeats North Carolina State. We give uh, that a dominance factor of six. Vandy, a very good football team. Virginia Tech and Rutgers, this one very even, went to overtime. Bach Tech pulls it out 13-10. So what does this really mean for them? Well, Rutgers is a very good football team at 9-3. and three. Let's say a solid football team, one of the top 30 teams in the country. They did have a kind of bad loss against Kent State. We know the Golden Flashes were, flashes were tough last year, but still, out of a non-BCS league, uh, losing to Kent State, Rutgers played in the worst by far of the six BCS conferences. And again, Vatek wins at 13-10, but they were a 6-6 team taking on a 9-3 and three team. Virginia Tech also lost out of conference to two other Big East teams in Cincinnati and Pitt. Doesn't uh, bode well for Virginia Tech helping the ACC in our analysis. Dominance factor here of two in Virginia Tech win winning in overtime against a better opponent, which helps them uh, in defeating a 9-3 and three Rutgers team. Vatek gets two points there for the ACC. Okay, finally, we got Cincinnati and Duke. Cincinnati wins at 48-34 as Duke shows up in postseason play for the first time since 1994. Dominance factor of three for Cincinnati. We don't give Duke a whole lot of credit. Game did come down to the wire despite the 14-point differential as Duke was driving down just a touchdown. Cincinnati ran back a pick to widen the spread to uh, 14 points there. Uh, Cincinnati's biggest win of the season was that win over Virginia Tech. Duke played one big-time game in non-conference play. got blasted by Stanford by 37 points, 50-13. to 13. Also, have to note some games, some really big games for the ACC by their non-bowl team. So we've got Maryland losing to just about everybody that they played outside of conference and going 2-10. and 10. Maryland lost to Temple, West Virginia, and UConn. Nothing to be too proud of there. North Carolina lost to Louisville, a very good football team, 39-34. Wake loses to Vandy, and Notre Dame crushed them. BC lost to just about everybody, including Northwestern out of the Big Ten. Miami uh, out of conference, blasted by Notre Dame, K-State in a huge way. Virginia lost to TCU, but also picked up a big win in Game 2 against Penn State at home when Penn State missed four field goals. Big win for the ACC there as Penn State turned out to be a better football team than expected at 8-4. and four. So this is how it shapes up for the ACC. They went 2-6 and six against the ACC. Uh, Big 10 split two games. So ACC with one, Big 10 with one. Big 12 against the ACC. The ACC went 0-3 in those games. Uh, Pac-12 at 1-1 uh, one and one, uh, with Virginia defeating Penn State. And then the bowl game with USC losing to Georgia Tech. ACC against the Big East. They went 4-5. and five, And against the rest of the top 25, meaning Notre Dame and Northern Illinois in this case, one up and one down. 
That's 9-17, and 17. and keep in mind that doesn't even include the bad Georgia Tech losses to BYU and Middle Tennessee. So again, the ACC goes 9-17. and 17. We will add up the dominance factor for you as well. Now we have to hear from you because I know you've got a ton to say about what we're doing in breaking down these conferences uh, in the BCS in 2012. Right here on Mark Rogers TV.